Hi, this is a quick video to show you how I made this hand-painted low-poly X. So I started off with a quick sketch that I made and put that as the background image. So I start with a plane and then extrude it. And then I mirror that. Create the basic cylinder shape and then start extruding again back in my orthographic view. You can be fairly simple with your topology as the textures when you're hand painting should do all the work. Having said that, when it comes to the blade, I would have liked it if there was slightly more topology when I'd finished, because the curve is a bit too blocky. What I should have done as well is in my sketch, I should have drawn out the topology. That would have made this process a lot quicker. And here's another place where I could have added more topology to make the curve smoother. What I do when I've got the basic shape is get rid of some of the topology by using the vertex snap mode and automatically remove doubles when they snap together. It's a very quick and easy way of removing topology. You end up obviously with lots of triangles, but in this case it's not animated and it's hand painted textures, so it should be fine. I create a separate object for the skull. And I use a reference image, which is obviously off the screen here, just to help me with the anatomy. It's slightly higher poly than I end up with, but it does help to have a bit more geometry to play with and then I can reduce it later once I've got the shape that I'm happy with. So again I'm using the snap to vertex tool and remove doubles automatically. and I'm just removing any extra faces that aren't visible. At this point I'm marking seams. It is much better to mark seams than it is to just smart UV project, because if I want to take it across into a painting program like Photoshop, which is possibly a bit easier than painting in 3D in Blender, then it's much easier if you've got a nice UV layout. Also, when I'm painting, I can select areas by their seams and isolate them to paint on. I set up my texture now, it's a 2K texture. And then the first thing I do is just block out the colors. So again, I'm using the seams to isolate areas 
and then filling in a block colour with the fill brush. So always start with big areas of colour and then go down into the detail later on. So I'm using sort of a, a blobby effect to add variation and I'm darkening the areas like in a sort of fake ambient occlusion way and I'm highlighting the edges. So this is sort of like pointiness and cavity masks but painted by hand. If you press S and left click you can sample a colour so you can see my colour palette builds throughout the process. And again it's still not full detail and I'm still blocking out general colours, highlighting some areas with the light colour and darkening the crevices with a darker colour. Eventually I set up three brushes, a multiply, a screen and a texture drawer, just general draw brush. The multiply darkens areas and the screen brush lightens. You've got to make sure you have a dark tone for your multiply brush and a light tone for your screen brush. And they're good because they don't really disrupt the textures too much. So if you've got textures down already, you can brush over them with those brushes and it will lighten or darken them. As opposed to adding a dark or light colour which would destroy the texture underneath. So here I'm trying to create a metal effect. What I should have done, and if I were to do it again, I would concentrate more on my 2D skills before going into the 3D program in something like Photoshop, trying to get these effects and practicing and testing things out. I'm relatively pleased with the results, but I know it could be better and I've seen much better artists out there. This is one area of Blender that tends to need a fair bit of artistic skill. And it's really useful to have reference images. I've got my reference images on my second monitor. Occasionally I bring them into here to have them just that bit closer. So I'm slowly building up some detail now. And of course at this point I have isolated the blade so I'm not hitting any of the other areas by accident. You can probably see there that the blade's very sort of chunky looking and I could have done with more topology to make it a smoother curve. So now I'm starting to add in uh, details, so these sort of etchings on the metal. And 
and I'm just using a dark brush and then a light brush to give it some depth, that sort of embossed feel. And here I'm adding some notches, again with just a dark brush and a light brush. These work fairly okay, but you can see you must wait to do these until you've done the base colour. I isolate the skull by hiding the rest of the mesh. There doesn't have to be too much detail here, but you can see my reference image on the side helping me. But I'm quite zoomed in now, so we won't see too much detail. Then I'm getting a reference image of some wood. I don't necessarily follow the reference images completely, but just to give idea of colors, making sure I'm on the right path with shade and tone. It's quite easy to become kind of blind to your image and then it's only when you look back at it after a couple of days that you think, oh, I could have done this better or that better. That's why reference images really help. They kind of anchor you down. Now all this time I have had symmetry turned on, so I've got, when I'm painting on one side, it will appear on the other side, so I only have to paint part of the image. It's only recently that I realized that Blender had that function. The great thing is you can turn this off and on, so you can then work on the seams in the middle of your object. So it's towards the end that I start tidying up the middle. I wasn't that pleased with the cloth, so I brought up a reference image to try and help me. That's something I went back to a day later just to tidy up. And you can see I'm using the smear tool now just to quickly sort out the seams in the middle from the mirror. And there we have it, the final piece. Hope you've learned something from this. As always, I'm happy to hear feedback and comments. I have been thinking about uploading these to the Unity Asset Store. It's a process that I've been interested in for a while, so if anybody's interested, let me know and I'll upload them. Thanks for watching.